Hey everyone, I'm the developer of Breezy Desktop. It's a Linux virtual workspace application for smaller form factor XR glasses like these Vitro Pros here. And what it does is it takes the monitor that's built into the glasses and the sensors that are built into the glasses and produces an XR workspace effect, which essentially allows you to pin a virtual display anywhere you want around you. And then when you move your head, this display stays where it is. So when you're using glasses like this, what that effectively allows you to do is look away from your monitor and see other things in the room. This is useful for getting stuff done because, for example, if I'm using my laptop, I can I can look away from my virtual screen and and then when there's nothing displayed in the glasses, I can I'll be looking through the glasses at my real display. So I can have you know several real monitors plus a virtual monitor. In the future, this is just the first version of Breezy Desktop, but in the future, I'll be able to have multiple virtual displays and potentially not even have any real displays. So I could have sort of a headless laptop at some point in the future or a desktop that doesn't have any other real monitor set up and use that combined with these kinds of glasses to have multiple monitors or one widescreen monitor around me and uh, and and get stuff done with without having to have a big monitor it's sort of a, a more portable solution and maybe even a cheaper solution than buying a bunch of monitors if you need a lot of screen real estate so uh, that's uh, that's what I'm going to be showing off today. I'm going to give a little introduction to it, show you how to set it up, and then show you what the controls look like and some of the things I've built into the software to make it a little bit easier to use. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. So here I am in my Fedora Linux environment, and the first thing that's important to point out is that you do need to be running a Linux distro with GNOME 45 or better as, as its desktop environment. So if you're not running GNOME, then um, you can install it and replace your desktop environment with it. There are other options as well if you can get it running in a virtualization environment like DistroBox or something like that. There's also a nested mode that, um, that I've mentioned before that is also an option, though it's not fully fleshed out yet. Um, if you are running GNOME, like I said, it's important that it's GNOME 45 plus, so you can check that by going into your About window, clicking on System Details, and checking GNOME version. You can see here I have 45.6. You can also be running 46. That's the latest version as of this video. And then once you've got GNOME 45 Plus running, the next thing you want to do is open up a browser, and I will put this link in the video description. This is my GitHub page for Breezy Desktop. Go down to the Breezy GNOME section, and in the GNOME setup, you'll see a link here for a setup script. Click on that. You'll see it download. The next thing to do is open up a terminal, run this command that sets the execute flag on the script, which allows you to run the script. And then you just run the script. It'll download the latest version of the binary, and it may prompt you for a pseudo password. So enter that. It runs through some setup of uh, an XR driver that I built, and a UI, and then a GNOME extension. So a GNOME extension is what allows me to do all the magic here. If you have the extensions app, you can open it up, and you won't see it yet, but this is where it will appear once, uh, once you've logged out and back in. I will also show you, if you search for Breezy Desktop, you will now find this application. And if you open it without logging out and logging back in, you will see this message that the extension is not ready. So that's telling me I need to log out and back in. So I will do that real quick, and then we'll see what this looks like. 
Okay, so now I'm back in my GNOME desktop environment. I've opened back up the Breezy desktop application and I enabled the effect. And now you can see an approximation of what this effect looks like. I've never seen anyone demo this very well because these aren't these aren't VR glasses, they're XR. So, you know, rather than covering up my whole vision, the glasses actually allow me to see things through them. So, you know, in the places where I'm not seeing a virtual display, I'm seeing these other monitors and, and, and other things from the real world behind them, and the monitor is just overlaid on top of the real world. So this is my best approximation. Keep in mind, it's not perfect. It's a little bit choppier looking than what I see, um, and you might see some odd uh, display movements that I'm not really seeing, but um, I wanted you to get an idea of what I mean when I say a pin display. I can look around and the display stays where I put it. Getting back to the UI, you can see, um, you know, it shows you which device is connected. There are several different supported devices, and I'm always trying to add more, so check the page uh, for Breezy Desktop and, um, and check if your model is supported at this time. If not, you'll see a different page than this. But if you've got a supported device connected, you'll see it right here, like I do. Um, and then let's get into the controls a little bit. I've already switched on the enabled um, effect. This is the same as enabling the extension in the extensions UI. So you can also turn it off or turn it on over there. And then uh, the next we have the display distance. So um, this moves the display closer or further from you. And it's effectively a, a type of zoom. The reason I called it distance is because in the future I will also have a uh, zoom, a zoom setting, and with uh, with side by side mode, you you can actually move the display further or closer to you, and it looks like it's further or closer. It's not just a zoom. So I, I wanted to have that here, and you can see if I move it further away, it acts like it's zooming out. You can zoom it pretty far out, and you know this isn't super useful. You can't read text, but if you wanted to just watch a video or something and have it be kind of in your peripheral, uh, it would be useful for that. 1.0 is the full screen. You know, this is the size of your glasses, so it takes over your full vision if you're looking straight at it. I prefer to have it slightly zoomed out at like 1.05, something like that. So you can see the full screen without it needing to be perfectly centered. And then if I zoom in, you know, to like 0.8, that's a pretty decent zoom. I could probably read anything uh, pretty easily, but I can't see the whole screen. So if I want to just be able to see a cropped version of the screen, this is okay. Um, and depending on what you're doing, that, that probably is okay. And my goal with Breezy is for, uh, and this UI is for people to not have to have this UI open. So I've added a number of shortcuts you can see here at the bottom. And let's look at the one that's related to display distance. Um, it lets you set your two most like comfortable distances, one that's zoomed out and one that's zoomed in. It could be any distances, but that was my intention. So let's say I like this distance that I'm at. I can click on this, and now I've set a starting distance. And now I can choose one. Let's say I want 1.1, like that. I can set that. And now let's look at this shortcut, Display Distance Shortcut, Control-Alt-Z. So looking down at my keyboard, Control-Alt and Z, if I hit that, I'm now toggling between these two distances. You can even see the slider moving there. So if I'm working, 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 and then I need to see something a little bit closer, I can, I can zoom in and zoom out really quickly. And like I said, my intention is for you to not need this open. So all of these shortcuts I'm going to show can be done without that application. The idea is to allow you to be as immersed in whatever you're doing as you would like to be. So you shouldn't need to have to consult with this application in order to change some of these quick settings. The next setting I've called Follow. Um, this one is intended to be more like the glasses are by default. So, you know, by default, you can't do this looking around. Um, the, the screen is always in front of you, and that's what follow mode is. But it's a little bit, it has a little bit of a twist, which is that the screen, it does allow you to move 
a little bit away from it. That way you don't have to look at the corners with your eyes. I can move my head and move a certain margin before it starts to follow me. But then, as I, as I look around, you can see the screen is, is staying within my vision. So if I do want to be kind of immersed in this one screen and not care about uh, what, what's behind it, I can do that and this still allows me to look around. There is a shortcut for that. Here I have it as Control Super Zero. Note that for all of the keyboard shortcuts, you do have the ability to change them. So if I wanted this to be Control Alt X, I can do that. And now I can toggle follow mode on and off. Um, one thing I did with follow mode is if you had it pinned before, it will snap back to where you had it pinned. So if I look over here and then I unfollow, it will go all the way back to where it was. So that's follow mode. And then the last thing I didn't talk about yet is the uh, recenter display. Some of these glasses do have drift, even the best ones. I do have first party support on some glasses like Vitcher, but uh, for glasses like the Xreal lineup where Xreal hasn't provided a first party SDK, we do get a little bit more drift with those ones. So if the screen moves a little bit from, you know, if it's over here and you want to put it somewhere else or put it back where it was, you just do this quick shortcut and now I've recentered the screen. That's it for the UI. And then I just wanted to reiterate some things I talked about in my last talk. This is supposed to be a really lightweight addition. It's just an extension. It's really an overlay on top of what GNOME Shell is already doing. So the idea is that it doesn't take a lot of resources on its own. And you should be able to do anything that you would normally do. So I've got my code open here. I should be able to zoom in real quick and kind of check out, you know, text if, if it's harder to read or if there's something I really need to focus on. I'm here I am in a code editor. Oftentimes I don't need to see the sidebar. I could zoom in on the middle and just get stuff done here. Um, I should be able to write down here. I've got a, a YouTube video. I should be able to watch videos. I should be able to play games. I should be able to do everything I can do. Right now I've got two screens, essentially. I've got a virtual, dis a virtual display and then the real display. And so if I normally use two displays on this laptop, then I should be able to do that without really a lot of additional uh, um, resources being eaten by this application. I should be able to still do everything I normally do with two screens. And then looking towards the future, right now I have a one virtual display and one real display set up like I've been showing you. Um, I can also have as many physical displays as I want. So these two displays I have in the background here, I could be using those and one virtual display. Um, as many as my computer can support, that's what you're able to do. In the future, I want to be able to have it so that you can have multiple virtual displays. If you want to have three displays or one curved widescreen display, uh, you'll be able to do that. And, uh, and, you know, and, and hopefully one day you wouldn't even need to have any real displays. So that is what Breezy Desktop gets you, and that's what, um, in the future, what I hope for it to become. Give this a try and let me know how it goes, and good luck.